Uh, last, last scheduled talk for this afternoon before the lightning talks uh, is Saket, who will be talking to us about uh, Django Redux. Thank you very much, Saket. Yep. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Saket, and uh, I'm primarily going to talk about my experiences of building a dynamic dashboard based on Django as a web backend and uh, Redux, React Redux as a front end. Um, I've been doing Django since 0 0.9 and have been mostly loyal to it. Uh, I had been hearing a lot about Redux, React, and stuff. Uh, and uh, it piqued my interest when I kind of figured out how philosophically it is pretty close to functional programming in Redux. And uh, we, when we initially started, there was a lot of things which we had to figure out. And uh, this talk is mostly going to be about sharing my experiences so that uh, that kind of reduces the learning curve for you guys. Uh, this talk by no means is going to be a React or a Redux tutorial. And also we are not going to do any comparisons how React com uh, Redux compares to Flux or something like that. Uh, I would assume uh, everybody over here knows, uh, is aware with MVC frameworks and uh, REST architecture. jQuery and Ajax are like everything. I mean, you, I assume you know this. Um, so when we started off with like uh, every week you have a new web frame, JavaScript framework coming, in, coming up and uh, or if you go on to do MVC, there are like 35 odd JavaScript frameworks. Uh, and it made us first to you know, uh, decide, difficult for us to decide which one to go with. Uh, Angular and React were like mostly the most popular ones, so we chose React and went ahead. Uh, typically when you want to uh, write code, you would want to abstract things uh, and see if the same thing can be reused at multiple places. Similarly, for our data store, we chose to have one REST backend and the iOS, the Android, or the web and the desktop refers to the same API as the data store. So that it simplifies us, you know, having uh, not to build a web backend plus frontend coupled together and then doing the same REST API somewhere or other for the iOS and Android. Uh, the good features about React is it's declarative. Uh, it has got XML sort of uh, syntax, JSX, wherein you can write your components and arrange them. Uh, it's basically the entire UI, the pages can be divided into different components and you can have each of your components modularly organized. And uh, with things like React Native, you can write your React code, you can extend your pre-written React code for web to iOS and Android as well. Um, having said that, let me just show you a very basic. React code, so this is your HTML page. I have included the react and react DOM. And here is what I have described a basic div with an ID example. And I'm loading the JavaScript file. And if we go to say hello world.js, there are two different components. One is a country and the other is a world. Uh, if you take a look over here, this world, the country component is present inside the world component. And that's how a very simplistic representation of how you include one component into the other. And lastly, in the example, we are just kind of rendering world. And the country itself will get rendered. Think of it as like of uh, inheritance, class-based inheritance. Um, Django is mostly an MTV framework. MVC is like model view and controller. Django is MTV where your template is the view and your view is the controller. Model is essentially your database abstraction layer. And view is where you write your logic and it, get rend renders, it gets rendered in your templates. Uh, React fits primarily towards the last part. For MVC, it's the view layer. For Django MTV, it kind of, it, it kind of is the template layer. Um, so this is what happened when we uh, started with uh, React. You had things like NPM, React, React Dev, Babel, I mean, tons of tools. Uh, how do we organize the static files? How do we uh, push it to production? Uh, should we use Gulp? Uh, should we use Bower? Uh, and felt like really complicated for us. Uh, so basically the way we kind of figured it out and simplified for ourselves was uh, the entire React 
code is transpiled, the JX, JSX code is transpiled into, uh, transpiled via Babel, and the Webpack loader combines all of these different files together and creates a single JavaScript files, JavaScript file which is later pushed to production and uh, used for rendering. Let me show you how it happens. So, essentially there is a file called webpack.config and this webpack.config takes a file, let me show you the, the code is mostly the same, the one which I had previously shown you. There's a country class and there is a world which inherits a country and you render the world, uh, as simple as that. And the addition to this is the webpack config wherein you mention an entry point so my main.js is the entry point, and where I want the code to be output, I mean the, the entire files, all of those uh, compiled, transpiled JSX files uh, combined together should be pushed to a file called output.js here. We use a plugin called bundle tracker to kind of log out whatever uh, logs are there for during the uh, process of uh, transpilation. And we use loaders, Babel loader, and we specify that we'll be dealing with React code, so we specify that in the presets. And there are things like node modules, which you do not want to uh, kind of include. Uh, and these are the extensions, uh, star.js, star.jsx, it follows the regex pattern. So webpack.config.json, you mention almost everything. It's almost like the settings.py in your Django. So this is the webpack.config is like the settings, uh, settings file, and you kind of mention all the entry point, output points, the plugins that you are gonna use, the loaders, and the kind of files that you want to you know, uh, transpile and uh, combine together. So far, so good, uh, but how do we do it in Django? So Django has a plugin called Django Webpack. There's a Django app called Django Webpack. Uh, so if you, I mean, it's a simple, So I think it's a simple uh, note model wherein you have a title and a status. And we have created a REST API for this using the Django REST framework. In the templates, we have an index.html. This template tag over here, render bundle main, tells Webpack to render whatever JavaScript has been compiled over here. And we have our JS. So let's look at this particular code. What we are doing essentially is we have created a model which is nodes. It has a title and a status. And we have created a REST API on top of it by Django REST framework that kind of spits out the JSON response to whatever the requests are being made to it. Now that JSON response is kind of being taken by a React application and that React application shows it, renders it into the browser. Uh, so we create a class called note list and we make an Ajax request to the API endpoint and we render the entire data as a list with node.title and node.status. And when this entire thing is come kind of combined together, we use Webpack and Webpack in the index.html tells to render the entire JavaScript which has been assembled together and you get to see the output. Uh, the problem we started facing was once we had multiple components, uh, we had around 15 odd components, different components together, and 
we fetch the data, we cache the data, and similar data needs to be present at three or four different components. And once a change happens in one component, the reflection in other components was getting extremely trickier for us. Uh, now that problem is essentially solved by an app uh, and library called Redux. Uh, so what Redux does is it helps you manage your the entire state of the application uh, using a JavaScript object called state. Uh, Let's look at it. There are three basic principles uh, with Redux. Redux has a single source of truth, the state, which is essentially a reflection of all the UI elements and the data that is present inside your uh, DOM. State is read-only, as in it's immutable. You cannot read to it. You, you, can, you can only read it, you cannot write to it. And changes are done by pure functions. By pure functions, pure functions are functions wherein they don't operate they don't make changes to the input set, they just operate and you know, kind of uh, send across the output. So let's take a look at the flow of uh, how uh, Redux works. Suppose there is an action in the UI. An action in the UI triggers an action via an action creator. That action creator combined with the current application state goes towards the reducer. This reducer is the pure function. This reducer updates the application state, which uh, is then kind of sent across to the view layer binding in, in Redux. And the renderer, the React renderer, shows out to the UI, throws it out to the UI. So uh, this is a very simple Redux workflow. Essentially, action is dispatched to the reducers. Reducers then update the current application state, throw it out to the view layer binding, and then the React renderer displays the same thing to the UI. Let me show you the code so that it becomes more clear. Over here, what we have a very simple to-do model, just an extension of the previous uh, node model. Again, we have an API for this, a serializer, Django REST framework. It takes uh, ID text and whether it's marked or not. Let's move on to the more interesting things. So again, uh, this is your React Redux application. We have reducers, we have actions and reducers. So let's first look into the actions. So whenever there is any UI interaction, the first thing is what we do is we make a call to the reducer, so this, the, the call to the reducer is kind of being made via here types.addToDo, makes a call to the reducer. There are multiple reducers which are kind of uh, defined already. Okay. Uh, the reducers dispatch those, I mean, uh, the action dispatch, dispatches the state, current state to the reducer, the reducer then makes changes to the entire DOM, and that is essentially kind of reflected towards the uh, UI element. So this kind of fills up the entire cycle. Uh, the last thing that we uh, faced, the, the problem which we faced with uh, React was, uh, the, the React Redux and our uh, DRF problem uh, uh, assembly was, uh, number one, it was not SEO friendly. Uh, Google recently released uh, that it can crawl uh, single page applications, but Bing still doesn't do this. Uh, the second thing was, it was taking a lot of time to, on the front end to uh, get the entire backend code and render it. So uh, the workaround that is kind of currently uh, being uh, practiced is, what you do first is you make a, f the first get request is made to a Python web server. 
the Python web server then serializes the entire data, the way we had seen in the to-do MVC, we had the data, the data is entirely serialized. And then there is additional node server, which runs uh, behind this Python web server. Uh, the entire data and the initial Redux state is thrown into the node server. In case if there is any additional uh, uh, data query that needs to be made to the API, that node server makes it to the API, gets the data, renders the component again back to the Python web server. The Python web server again assembles all these components and renders the page. Now this kind of solves the SEO problem wherein any web crawler is hitting your uh, endpoint, your uh, URL, you, it gets to see the entire page. Number two, uh, it doesn't take too much of time and, and for subsequent, you know, uh, uh, Requests, API requests, the client itself from here, React, it's the, the Redux client from here itself makes a request to the API directly. It doesn't have to go through all the entire, uh, entire process. So this is just the first time and subsequently, subsequent uh, API calls are directly to the API. So that kind of reduces the entire time. Uh, and the third thing was uh, we were able to separate things like there is no more template at the Django templates. It's just React entire static files and uh, that brought in about separation of concerns as in front end is front end, back end is back end. Uh, that is what we have done mostly. Uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Saket. And again, if you've got any questions, please form a line. Um, just to get the ball rolling, uh, that last slide you showed with the uh, sort of the uh, yeah. farmed out server side rendering. Yeah. Uh, understand entirely why it's necessary. Uh, there, is there what's what's the performance overhead for that? I mean, obviously it's just template rendering, but yeah. it's just template rendering behind a HTTP stack. So does yeah. that slow anything down in any meaningful? Uh, way? Uh, to be very honest with you, I mean, we are not facing hundred millions of requests per day. So for us, performance is not an issue. Um, the initial, the, the thing was, the first problem which we faced was the first load was taking too much of time. And this uh, solution helped us minimize the load from around two, three seconds to like, I don't know, whatever million seconds is, milliseconds is. So uh, that's the first point. Second point, we are yet to hit the state of traffic wherein we want to worry about how much that additional, you know, uh, Python to node server uh, 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 request response time is. Uh, so I think uh, at this point, we don't have enough data points to, you know, answer your question. Sure, all right. Um, okay, well, one more just to keep going. Uh, the, um, you showed up, there was a lot of JavaScript code that was up there. Yeah. Um, a lot of that was following sort of some fairly common patterns for, what, for a lot of people, you know, should display a list of objects, display a single object that's being yeah. updated and so on. Is there any scope for any of that to be modularized, reused in a, in a reusable Django app of any kind? Or is it, is it something that is gonna be genuinely custom built for every application? I don't get you, I mean, um, so, okay, so there is a lot of, you had, you've had to write a lot of JavaScript, you yes, had to write yes. a lot of models. Yes, yes. Is any of it sufficiently boilerplate that it could be uh, templated, uh, wrapped up in an easy to use bundle so you can just say, give me a Redux list of objects. No, display. no, right? is it all no, custom? no, no. I mean, the most you can get is what Redux has and there are several boilerplates, but I mean, whatever components you want to write, you need to write on your own. Uh, there are things like, uh, React strap, I mean, in case if you just want the bootstrap thing directly into your, you know, you're right. So there are things, libraries like React strap, uh, apart from them, that there's nothing that exists. Yeah. Right. I just had a question about that template tag, the, mm -hmm. the bundle template yeah, yeah, tag. Yeah, sure. So is that taking a pre-rendered, so you've run Webpack that's produced yeah. a single .js file. Yes. And is that inserting the whole JS file in that template? Yes. And then serving that whole thing up. Yes. So that's quite a large page in terms yes. of. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just, just yeah. wanting to Not check sure. I was yeah. saying that right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, then. Thank you very much, Saket. Thank you.